Let's say I got a piece of graph paper in front of me, and I'm asked to identify this point right here. Well, I've been doing this sort of thing since well, late elementary, early middle school, so that's not too much of a problem for me. I can start at the origin of the graph paper and count blocks. So looking only in the horizontal or x direction, I've got, let's see, one, two, three, four, four to the right, and in the y direction, got one, two, three upward. So I could identify this point as four comma three. But really what I've done is found the x and y components of a vector. So imagine instead I identify it a different way. I draw a line from the origin to the point directly. So now instead of four comma three, all I need to do to identify this point would be to know the length of this vector or the magnitude and the direction of it as well. What is the angle above the x-axis? So this is where my understanding of right triangle trigonometry, particularly the Pythagorean theorem and Sokotoa, comes into play. At this point, I don't need the graph paper and I don't need these axis lines. Let me get rid of them to clean up the space a little bit. So now I've just got my vector drawn, a dotted horizontal line just for reference, and what I'm trying to solve for is the length of the vector as well as that angle theta in degrees. I already know my x and y components. My x component is 4, my y component is 3. So I've drawn a little red dotted line to indicate the x component, little uh, dotted blue line to indicate the y component. Now I'm going to label my vectors. Let's say that I want to call this vector A because I'm that creative. And a lot of times, vectors are denoted with a little arrow above them to tell you that they're a vector and not a scalar. So I'm going to label my x and y components as well. And ultimately, what I've done is created a right triangle, where my vector a is the hypotenuse, and the x and y components are the legs of the triangle. So now I can just solve for the length of vector a itself using the Pythagorean theorem. The hypotenuse squared equals the sum of the square of the sides. So plugging in our actual values and continuing to solve it out the rest of the way, then I end up solving for a to be 5, which kind of makes sense. It's a right 3, 4, 5 triangle. So I'm going to add the result right here on our original page. So I know that my vector has a magnitude, has a length of five blocks. But that's not enough to solve the problem. I also need to know what this angle theta is. And here's where your right triangle trig of Sokotoa comes into play. I picked sine, but you could have used sine, cosine, or tangent. Now since sine of theta is opposite over hypotenuse, that leaves me with sine of theta equaling 3 over 5 in this case. To solve for theta itself, I'll take an arc sine, and the arc sine of 3 over 5 comes to about 36.9 degrees. Typically in physics, I'll use degrees rather than radians, but you need to be comfortable jumping back and forth. So, originating with a simple point that was 4 comma 3, we now know we can rewrite it as magnitude 5, angle 36.9 degrees. To give you another visualization as to how a vector can be identified by magnitude, angle, or by x component and y component, imagine a circle, if you will. Now, no matter the angle in which you're looking, the radius of a circle stays constant the whole way around. Imagine this has a radius of 2, simply because I like the number 2 and I'm the teacher, so I get to do what I want. Now I'm going to show the same circle, except I'm going to take away the border of the circle, and I'm going to slap it onto some graph paper. I'm also going to have the x component labeled in red and the y component labeled in blue. So currently, the y component is 0, and you can actually see a little blue 0 off here on the side. The x component is 2. This is because my vector is perfectly horizontal and has no vertical component at all. That's at zero degrees. As I start changing theta, you can see the y component increase and the x component decrease. But the original vector itself, which is now the hypotenuse, 
still has a length of two, just like it did when it was traveling around the circle. So the x and y components do change with direction. Now I've got an x component of negative two and a y component of zero. Up here, I have an x component of zero and a y component of two. And then in the middle, they're just the two legs of the triangle. This is a way that you can pretty much always view vectors. The vector itself is the hypotenuse of the triangle, and the x and y components are the two legs. Now, one weakness of this simulation, it's not showing negative numbers, and I wish it would. Right now, the red number should say negative 1.29. We'll get more into positives and negatives in class.